In this video, we're going to write a very simple Java program using only Notepad++ and the Java compiler. Really, that's all that you need. Now, an IDE like NetBeans, Eclipse, or IntelliJ, and there are many others on the market, that will make our life much easier. But at the bare bones level, all you really need to write a Java program is a text editor and the Java compiler, and then to run it, a JVM. So I'm in the virtual labs. I made a previous video on how to uh, access the virtual labs. So I'm in the virtual labs, and I'm going to write a quick Java program. Now, we've never seen Java program before, so you're going to see a whole lot of symbols and syntax and things that maybe you haven't seen before. Uh, so don't let that get in the way. We will have plenty of time this semester to describe what each of those things are. Let's just focus on the other processes right now, the process of writing, running, and compiling. So first of all, I need to tell, I, well, I'll tell you what, why don't we start by saving our file? So it's an empty file. I'm going to choose Save As, and I want to find a place where I can save it. Now, we have to be a little bit careful because this is a virtual lab, and our sessions are not persistent. In other words, what I save on the C disk now uh, won't be there the next time I access a virtual lab. Let's see if I have right access to temp. So if I say uh, greeting, let's say greetings.java, uh, can I save this? That's question number one. Number two, if I save it right now, what's the name of the file going to be? Take a look. It's going to be greetings.java.txt because we have the save as type down here as .txt. But that's not going to work for us. Uh, it, it, Java source code has to be saved in a file that ends with the .java extension. It cannot be .java.txt. So let me show you one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts that one of the very first students I ever had back in 2001 showed me. Uh, her name was Christy Orlick, and so I call this the Christy Orlick shortcut. If we put the file name in quotes, it ignores the save as type that you see down here. So let's hit save, see if we have permission, which honestly I don't know. Looks like we do. ctempgreetings.java. Now, what I'm going to have to do is give this a name. I'm going to, I've already called it greetings, but I have to give what's called the class a name too. Now, the class is essentially our programming unit, and it's going to start with this kind of syntax. Public class, you see that word class, and then whatever the file name is, not including the .java extension. So public class greetings. Dot Java. Okay, I'm sorry, I just didn't mean to do that. Public class greetings, open curly, and then close curly. These curlies are very important in the Java programming language because they set a boundary, kind of like a property line. And I'll tell you from having taught intro programming for many years, probably one of the most confusing things for new programmers is understanding this boundary, this open curly, close curly. Essentially, everything within these open and closed curlies that I have now are going to be part of the class or the programming unit that I'm writing right now. So we don't want to put anything after the closed curly. That's not going to work. There are a few things we'll need to put before the open and closed curly, uh, or before the open curly more specifically, but nothing we need to worry about just yet. Okay. Within our class, and again, the open and closed curly is our class, within our class, we're going to have a series of methods. And essentially, every method is a verb, a unit of work, which is a verb. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say there's, there's one special method where everything gets started, and that's what we call the main method. Now, again, don't worry too much about syntax. We'll have plenty of time to look at that over the semester. So I know this is going to be a bit of a confusing syntax. But if I make a method called public static void main, that's just a special method, which is where our program is going to start. Now, anytime I'm within an open and closed curly set, and I'm going to add another block, and a block is the definition we give in open and closed curly set. Anytime I'm within a block and I want to add another block inside of that block, okay, so block inside a block, I want to indent. If I do not indent, it's going to look really sloppy and really messy. So for readability, I'm going to add this method. The method is a block. I'm going to add the method at one tab stop in from flush left, which is where the class is. Okay. 
So I'm going to say public static void main and then open parenthesis string open and close square bracket args close parenthesis open curly and then tab down a bit and close curly. And you see how that lines up. Okay. Uh, just so you know what these are, the public is an access modifier. Static, don't worry about that one just yet. Void is a return type. Main is a method name. And string args is any uh, argument or parameters we're receiving into this method. That's just a very high level. Again, don't worry too much about that syntax. Now, if I want to print something out, I'm going to use another special syntax called system.alt.println. Okay? Open curly and then quotes, and I'm going to say hello class, and then uh, exclamation, close quote, close paren, terminate with a semicolon. I know, more syntax that we have to deal with, more that we'll explain later. Uh, this is a simple one line Java program. So uh, I will point out, though, if you're trying this at home, the syntax has to be exactly what I wrote here. The capitalization, the punctuation, the matching open, close, curly, the match and open, close, quotation marks, the semicolon. All of these things have a reason for being here, and they must be here. So I'm going to save. So at this point, we have just source code. This is something that the computer can't do anything with because this is written in roughly English, you know, English-like words. We have to change this into a series of zeros and ones that the computer is going to understand. And for that, we need the Java compiler. The Java compiler runs on the command line. First of all, we have to find the Java compiler. So let me show you another one of my favorite shortcuts. I'm going to hold down the Windows key and press E, and that will open Windows Explorer. What's nice about that is you don't have to walk through and tell someone, click Start, Programs, Accessories, Windows Explorer. A simple Windows key E will pull it up right away, which is very nice. So I click on the C drive, and what I'm looking for is a program called javac.exe, and that is the Java compiler. Typically, it's going to be under programs or program files or something like that. So I go to program files, and I'm going to scroll down, and I find Java. And inside Java, I see a bunch of things called JDK and a couple called JRE. JDK is the Java development kit. Emphasis on development. It's written for developers to write programs. JRE is the Java runtime environment, which is meant to run programs. So our interest is in the JDK. I click on the JDK, click on bin, and now down here I'm going to see... Do I see Java C? Uh-oh. I don't see Java C. There it is, right there. Java C EXE. So that's the Java compiler. Uh, that's what I need to run. Now, the Java compiler needs to know what it is compiling. And it's going to be compiling this class called greetings.java. Now, a little, a little interesting thing is going to happen. Let me get that centered again one more time. Uh, an interesting thing is going to happen. We have to run the Java compiler inside the directory where greetings.java exists. There's actually a little exception to that when we get into packages, but let's not worry about packages yet. That's more complication than we need to worry about right now. So I need to navigate to this directory, ctemp, and then open a command window. How do we do that? You probably, you might, may or may not know how to open a command window. We typically go start, and then we can type cmd and then hit enter. But the problem is that takes us to a directory where we don't want to be. Uh, we want to be in ctemp, not cusersjonesvr. We can easily navigate to ctemp by doing a little change directory magic, but you know an easier way. Let me show you an easier way. Windows key E one more time. C drive. Now I'm going to click on temp. Now watch closely. I'm going to bring this into our view here, and I'm going to double click on it. And watch what I do here. I click up in the address bar, and it highlights the address ctemp. Let me change that. Let me just type in the letter CMD, all lowercase, all at once. Hit enter and take a look. It takes us right to that directory in the command window. Now, it's not so handy if you're one directory off of C, but if you're deep in a series of directories, that will save you a lot of time. Okay, now let's do a DIR. Let's see what we have in this directory. You see greetings.java. Now, look closely at that. 
there's only one file that starts with greetings and it's called greetings.java. What we want to do is we want to make the bytecode, which is what the computer can use to run this program. To create the bytecode, we need to run that Java compiler. So uh, I would say Java C, but the problem is it says Java C is not a recognized internal or external command. It doesn't know where Java C is, or at least the Java compiler that we wish to use. So in that case, I have to give it this entire path that we see here. C program files Java JDK 1.8 Ben. And program files, unfortunately, has a space in it. So we're going to need to use a little DOS shortcut. I'm going to say C colon backslash colon backslash. And then I'm going to say program tilde 1. Uh, back in the old days when I was in college, our directories were limited to eight characters and couldn't have spaces. So around the time Windows 95 came out, they allowed spaces, but then they had to have a way to convert a long directory name with spaces in it to one that older version of Windows would understand. And typically what they would do is just use the first six letters of the directory and then put a tilde one, uh, and that was an abbreviation for the directory program files. Now, if you happen to have also program files x86, that would be program tilde two. So basically, if you have redundant directories that have the same first six letters, they just go one, two, three, so on and so forth. They get numbered. Not very important, but that's just, you know, that's how I came up with C program tilde one. Now Java. And then I'm going to say JDK 1.8.0 slash and then bin slash and then Java C. And I'm going to hit enter. We'll do Java C.exe. I'm going to hit enter and let's see what we get. Well, we get something else. It, it gives us a little feedback on some th flags that we can pass to Java C. But the good news is now at least it recognizes this Java C command. So I'm going to I'm going to up arrow, which is going to give me that command again. And then I'm going to say greetings .java, And I'm telling it, I want you to compile this file greetings .java. First, it's going to look for any syntax issues that we might have. And it will tell us if it finds syntax issues. If it does find them, it won't let us compile. But if there are no syntax issues, it will successfully compile. So I hit enter. And let's see what happens. We get no feedback, and it takes us right back to uh, ctemp again. That's actually really good news. If there's an error, it's going to tell us what the error is. If there is no error, it won't say anything. It'll compile it and take us right back to the ctemp prompt again. But now let's take a look. If I type in dir, what do I get? Oh, take a look at that. 6.04 p.m., which is when I'm recording this video, on May 15th, which is when I'm recording the video, greetings.class. You see, it was able to compile greetings.java into greetings.class. So that's Java C, or the Java compiler, which changes source code into bytecode. Now let's try to run our program. Running is a little bit easier because this program Java is on the computer's path, and therefore we don't have to give it a long directory name to find it. All we need to do is say Java, space, and then the program we want to run, which is greetings, enter. And take a look. There's our output. It says, hello, class. So this is a very simple Java program, but it does show that the bare minimum, all you need is a, a, some text editor like Notepad or Notepad++, a Java compiler, Java C, to go from source code to bytecode, and then a Java runtime environment, usually just called Java, to actually run the program. It's very practical and very useful, and that's a good place to start. But before long, we want to take advantage of our shortcuts and a lot of things like debugging. The debugger, honestly, is probably the most important thing you're going to learn and you're going to use this semester. Uh, so with that, we need to go a little more advanced. And for plain Java, we want to take a look at the NetBeans IDE. For Android, we'd take a look at something like Android Studio. That does everything that we just did, uh, but it does do, go ahead and click yes on this, but it does add a much more user-friendly wrapper around it. Makes it uh, you know, a lot easier to debug so you can actually watch your program run. You can watch each line execute. Makes it easy to run. You don't have to worry about directories. Uh, so 
Notepad++ is the basic, but when we get into NetBeans or Android Studio, then we get into things that are going to give us a whole lot of productivity. So I look forward to uh, taking a look at those this semester. We sure have a whole lot more we can do with them and a whole, whole lot more we can look at. Uh, so I'll see you then. Thank you.